PHP 8.5 will be released this week and there's been a lot of work behind the scenes on performance, operations and debugging related improvements, which I want to highlight in this video. You cannot usually find these in new release announcement posts or other videos. Moin, I am Benjamin and I'm working on PHP performance related topics for the past 10 years, helping thousands of developers along the way. If you want to know if PHP 8.5 is faster than previous versions of PHP, then I have to disappoint you. There have been no significant general improvements to PHP 8.5, so that an upgrade will unconditionally make your application faster than running on PHP 8.4. But I will release a video on the PHP 8.5 performance benchmark in comparison shortly, so subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet to get notified when it's out. Instead, in this video, I'm going to focus on changes that make individual code faster. The first optimization I want to talk about is an opcode specialization for the isIdentical array statement. What this means is um, in PHP you can write uh, a few different ways to think about comparing if an array is empty or not. So uh, one way would be to use the not operator, so say not a variable. You can say count of the array is zero. You can use the empty function and you can use um, this way that is less common where you write the is identical operator three equals and then you write the empty uh, array declaration um, and compare it to that. And in PHP 8.4 and previously this was the slowest way of doing it. You can see my colleague Tim's benchmark here where he uh, connects the four different ways I mentioned and empty, using the empty um, construct is the fastest one. Then the next is using the not operator, then count, and uh, the slowest one is using the is identical statement. So the way it's written here. And what you can do in the PHP engine is if there is an opcode and you come across an opcode, for example, the is identical operator and the opcode for it, you can write a specialized handling if you have certain conditions that are true at compile time. So you at compile time you already know that you compare something against the empty array. And um, uh, Tim did that in his patch. So he identified this case. You can see here, you can use a specialized handler for the end uh, is identical. And then here are the conditions that need to be true. And if that's true, then he writes specialized opcode, which is much faster than the general uh, opcode for the is identical operation. And we are seeing the benefits in the second benchmark, where we see that um, the identical operation is the fastest one, with um, the empty and not one being 4% slower, and using the count function being 30% slower. So what this shows is that using micro-optimizations over time can produce code that is not even the fastest uh, anymore because the underlying engine changes, things in the functions change, so code changes through using more modern PHP versions. And what you can do or should do if like a certain block of code is not really critical in the hot path, just use the uh, most readable way of writing code instead of hunting for always the best and most fastest uh, way of writing something. The next optimization I want to talk about is also um, optimizing opcodes or generated opcodes. This case, in this case, for the match true statement. So if you're using the the match statement with the true as the variable, so. Uh, you want to use the different cases to differentiate which one is executed, then uh, with this pull request um, and change in PHP 8.5, the generated opcodes from that are optimized um, and this construct will be faster. So um, you can see um, uh, Volker, also my colleague, ran a small benchmark for this example that um, is included in this pull request where there are four different uh, match statements being executed um, in this match true construct. And he showed that for 1 million iterations, um, the new code is 20% faster. 
just by having a more optimized match construct. The next optimization in PHP 8.5 is this new curl share init persistent API that was included through a RFC. And I've talked about this in a previous video, and this is going to have the most significant impact on applications, but it requires really that you change your, um, the way you communicate with third-party APIs. Um, as you might know, PHP um, has a shared nothing memory model. That means nothing is shared between processes. This includes, if you do calls to third-party APIs, the connection, the DNS resolving time, and the SSL handshake time. And with the share init um, API for curl, you can now share this across multiple PHP requests and uh, processes. That means you can only do the connection and DNS and SSL handshaking to a third-party host once across the lifetime of the whole PHP process and then all subsequent requests will reuse that. And this can mean a lot of time um, saved if the third-party API that you're talking uh, to is not really located close to your uh, servers. And um, once this is spread across different HTTP libraries like Guzzle and Symfony HTTP client, and they expose this and we are able to use this across our applications, we will see a lot of benefits uh, from this change alone in PHP 8.5. How can you use it? It's a simple new API, curl share in it. You pass uh, one of three constants or all of them as an array, DNS, connect and SSL handshake. And then you use this share resource and pass it to any curl handle as an option. And this automatically makes this available across requests and processes and shares this. Another performance related change is uh, relating to the garbage collection. And previously in PHP 8.4 and uh, lower versions, if you used enums or static fake closures, then they were not specifically marked as um, that they are not using cycles. So by definition, an enum is not pointing to another object and also a static fake closure is not doing that. So they can never be actually garbage collected by the cycle collector because when they're present, they're still used, there's no cycle, they cannot be collected. So checking if they should be collected is already wasteful. And with this change by Ilya, they are not considered um, for the cycle collection anymore. And this either makes the garbage collection trigger much later because you're using a lot of enums and static fake closures, or um, it makes it faster because it's not considering these um, um, additional objects that cannot be collected by the garbage collection anyways. So um, you can see in this pull request here, in the old way um, for this example code for 10 million static fake closures, um, the garbage collection runs 44 times, application runtime is 1.8 seconds, and after this change, garbage collection doesn't run at all anymore, and application time is uh, 1.6 seconds. So 200 milliseconds are saved uh, by this optimization, not wastefully running the garbage collector. So one thing you might ask yourself is, what is a static fake closure? And in this example, you can see using this um, a splat operator here the, um, to create a closure from a function call um, is considered a stack static fake closure in the engine. And there's also another way to generate it using the closure from callable function on a uh, reflection closure from callable and um, uh, also a few other ways of creating static fake closures. Another change in PHP 8.5 is that opcache is now a required extension. It's a required part of PHP. You cannot disable it anymore. That also means opcache is not a shared object anymore. It's compiled into the PHP binary. And the only way to not have the opcache cache something is to use any directives. Opcache enable um, to zero, and uh, for CLI scripts, opcache enable CLI had to be enabled and still has to be enabled explicitly to enable opcache. The benefit of this change is that the optimizer of the engine 
and the optimizations that happen in Opcache can now more easily interact with each other. It might be easier to write this code. It might be easier to move some code from, op, uh, from the Opcache extensions into the engine. It will reduce the maintenance cost and it will also reduce the source of errors. For example, it's still necessary in the official Docker PHP images to explicitly enable Docker. And if you forget that, then uh, your Docker containers will not contain Docker at all, uh, op um, cache at all. And this is a performance problem that we see occasionally from uh, with customers using Docker and Kubernetes, for example, where their application is not using op uh, cache at all because they forgot to include that in their PHP container. Another op uh, cache related change is uh, also going to be making Docker container users, AWS uh, Lambda users, for example, through Breath or through Laravel, um, uh, happy because there's now a way to generate the op cache file cache, so generating the op cache optimizations during a build step into files and then uh, specifying that the file system of the running production container is read only and so that nothing inside PHP happens to violate this read only file system which previously meant that um, with a, a read only file system you couldn't use the the, the file cache of opcache because it would just um, perform uh, delete operations and crash the process, lead to errors and stuff. So this is now possible using in, through an uh, uh, any setting. You can specify that the uh, file system of the cache is read-only and this will uh, make it possible to use it with uh, Breath, for example. You can see in the pull request also that the Breath author, Mathieu uh, Napoli, um, responded to this change and tested this and he saw um, the cold start time of a container reduced by 100 to 150 milliseconds um, by using this. And you can see his blog post uh, on the topic. Uh, I think this is a great thing uh, um, for these kind of deployment scenarios. And I hope to see like uh, these kind of big of improvements benefiting uh, the whole community. Another operations related change is the introduction of the uh, PHP build provider constant. This constant is now compiled into the PHP binary. If the, um, in, if the environment variable PHP build provider is set during the compilation step. And this allows um, a build provider for PHP to specify who they are, give some more context. And the community already would work into individual build providers setting this. So Homebrew, Debian, Fedora, and the official Docker images will set this value. You have this constant in PHP code available in this case. So it's defined. You can echo it. And this information was already shown in the PHP info output and in the PHP dash version output um, of the binary and now is available at runtime. Another um, change in PHP 8.5 is also rega uh, regarding debugging capabilities. Um, it will be especially helpful when providing error reports to the PHP projects or to open source projects. Um, you can specify this um, dash dash ini equals diff um, flag to the PHP binary and it will output all the INI settings that have changed compared to the default values. So it will only output the changed variables. And with this information, you can um, uh, attach it to a, a bug report or something like that. And then a contributor can more easily see what you changed compared to the defaults. And it will make it much easier to, uh, to figure out the changes that potentially are causing problems um, for maintainers. Before PHP 8.5, um, the memory limit uh, variable that you can specify in PHP INI could always be overwritten at runtime by writing some code, uh, writing any set memory limit, increasing it to two gigabytes, four gigabytes, whatever high value you want. However, in certain scenarios, the operator of a system may want to restrict 
uh, and this, this allow the runtime to increase the memory indefinitely. And this is now po uh, possible in PHP 8.5. You can specify a maximum memory uh, limit that um, the runtime cannot increase above. So if you set the max memory limit, for example, to 200 megabytes, runtime can never change it to be higher. If you try to attempt to set it higher, then it will set it to the max memory limit. And um, this is giving additional safety to operators of PHP and um, preventing developers of the system to increase the memory um, across certain or above certain allowed limits. If you had memory related problems in PHP itself, crashes, uh, anything related to the memory allocation, it was quite difficult to find these bugs without like recompiling PHP, adding additional memory protections, attaching a debugger um, that allows this. All of this was quite difficult uh, before. And uh, we at Tideways uh, shipping a PHP extension to third-party people, our customers using Tideways. Sometimes if there's a problem in memory, it was very hard debugging this. With this change in PHP 8.4 that Arno added, um, there's actually a way to increase the output um, and have some additional memory debugging information just by setting an environment variable to the already compiled PHP binary. You can see in his pull request description the send mm debug environment variable can get a bunch of different information here and with that you get additional debugging capabilities and if you run like across a memory related sec fault in your PHP on production um, you now have some additional capabilities of finding out why this happens. Arguably this is very advanced however like it will uh, help across the community. Another RFC that uh, went into PHP 8.5 uh, um, improves debugging capabilities and it's um, a new, like an improvement to how backtraces work with fatal errors. Or at least sort of now they are rendered with fatal errors. Previously, if you ran a PHP script and it uh, ran into a fatal error, then there was actually no stack trace printed um, with that error. So if you're running a script on the CLI, for example, a fatal error occurred, maximum execution time of one second reached, you wouldn't ha know like where this happened. And with PHP 8.5, we now automatically see the text stack trace attached to that. And this is also tied into the display error setting. So when you set display errors to on, you will see this. When it's to off, you won't see it. Uh, so it's some additional information that helps you debug in your development system. When you show errors, um, you will be able to see where they happened. The last change is also related to error handling and it's the introduction of two new functions, get error handler and get exception handler. It was previously possible to get access to these through some obscure way of using restore and set handler, but it was not obvious to like new users of PHP how they are able to obtain uh, the reference to the current error and uh, exception handler. And with these two new functions, it's now easier to write this kind of code. There are polyfills available to use it in lower versions, but with PHP 8.5, you can now rely on these functions to be available, and uh, it's easier to write more complex um, error handling and exception handling code uh, using those two functions. I hope you can see there are some really great additions to PHP performance, to uh, operations, and to debugging capabilities in PHP 8.5. I'm really excited about it. I'm also quite proud that uh, my colleagues Tim and Volker did a lot of work on this release. Tim did like quite a few changes and Volker will be the release master of the 8.4 um, branch. And we as Tideways sort of like contributed to this version in this big regard. I hope uh, that you find these changes interesting as well um, and that you find they are a great addition um, on top of the new features that PHP 8.5 will include. If you're interested in additional videos about PHP performance related topics, 
please subscribe to this channel or subscribe to the newsletter that is linked in the description as well. We, and we will get in touch with you when something new is coming up. Bye.